Go ahead on to me, how? So I'm 37. We're going to get the third verse. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It goes on to say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment or justice as the noonday. Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Thank God for the reading of his already blessed word. Now I want to I want to tell you all kind of the genesis of what I'm going to share with you today. It began as rain on me. Then it changed as I was reading and I was sharing. It became rain on me. Kept on a little while. What we want to share with you today is rain in me. Now, it's a funny thing, and one of, one of them I didn't even bother to define and go in, because one thing we look at, naturally speaking, uh, if you will, that I can think of offhand and that I love that, there are in fact three different spellings of rain. Y'all bothering me. Y'all bothering me because y'all ain't saying amen. I'm talking to you. You got to talk back to me. I was asking for confirmation. I said, right? Talk to me. Because then I have to ask the same question over again. Y'all think something wrong with me. Now, you have the R-A-I-N. A lot of times, you know, so it's going to rain on me. So that's what it's Rain on me. Now we have time to talk about that. Then you have the R-E-I-N. And I need you to note this, because I believe the Lord will bring it together for us after a while. The R-E-I-N, rain, by definition it talks of and speaks about a narrow strap of leather attached in pairs to a horse's bit. And it is manipulated to control that animal. Or that horse with different animals. Second meaning says a means of controlling. And this is what I like. It said a restraint. So now that's the R-E-I-N. Then you have the R-E-I-G-N brain, which speaks of royal power, dominance or sway. It can speak of, chronologically speaking, the period of rule or dominance. And, oh, I like this one, it says, to rule as sovereign. Now, sovereign, let's understand that 
Let me say something. When someone is sovereign, it means they are above all others. It speaks to the fact that they are chief, that they are supreme. And then finally it said, uh, in that definition of R-E-I-G-M, reign, to prevail. So when we look at this today, reign in me. You gotta understand it's it, it, it's very key that we commit to the Lord ourselves. Amen. 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 Uh, you you can't expect that somehow the Lord is going to reign in you unless you commit and submit yourself fully and completely to God and His rule. Amen. I said God's people yes, Lord. must actively, consciously trust that God's word is true Amen. and that he always acts in accordance with his word. Yes, Every situation we encounter is an opportunity to choose to trust God rather than our own inclinations. Faith involves an element of risk because sometimes when you talk about faith, you, you generally you're talking about something that's an unknown. Uh, when you talk about exercising faith, you may not really be sure exactly how it's going to turn out. But if you trust God, that God has the best intentions Oh, my God, whatever those situations might be, whatever, oh, my God, the circumstance might be, if you learn to really trust God, yes, if you choose to believe that he reigns, yes, if you choose to believe that and know that the word of God has been proven to be absolutely trustworthy. Amen. Oh, my God. If you expect Jesus' shepherd in care, you've got to trust him. And you know what you also have to do when you realize that he's reigning in your life. you got to believe the Lord for your vindication. Oh my God, God will take care of his own. You don't have to seek uh, revenge and uh, resolution on your own, but when you give it to God, Hallelujah. You're trusting that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand, even as I went through those definitions, as we go back to Romans 6 and 12, and I read it again, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That is a R-E-I-G-N. He said that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So now you must understand that there is a need. Hallelujah. Somebody have to say there is a need. There is a need. There is a need uh, that the Holy Ghost reigns, R-E-I-N-S, my flesh in so that God reigns, R-E-I-G-N-S, in me. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Ghost, I need the Holy Ghost to reign my flesh in. So that God reigns in me. Somebody shall glory there. When you look at the outset of this sixth chapter of Romans, it poses a couple of questions. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Answer came back, God forbid, or certainly not, or of course not, or if you will, are you kidding me? How shall we that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. <laughs> Goes on to say, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized 
into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, Lord have mercy, into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I want you to know that when God, when Christ reigns in your life, you have to walk in newness of life. Because you're no longer the same. There's been a transformation. Hallelujah. There's been a radical change. There's been a 180 degree turn. Somebody say amen. Amen. You don't understand thinking of these questions. The idea of a Christian continuing in sin is entirely contrary to the gospel. Sin is hateful and destructive. And, and, and from those who are dead to, to the love of sin and the ruling power, oh my God, should never want to live in it any longer. Would have been nice if I had my thoughts. Amen. Somebody say that's better. That's better. Understand that when you talk about being baptized into Jesus Christ, you have to understand that water baptism is a symbol of the believer's union with Christ in his death. Oh my God, in his burial and in his resurrection. Amen. Amen. We just got through celebrating. We're not serving a, 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 a God, a, a, a Savior that is dead. But he is alive. Glory to God. And I need him, and we should understand we need him to reign in us. So the fact is, our old man is our pre- conversion life. What we were before becoming Christians, uh, when we abided under the uh, unrestrained dominion of flesh, of our sin nature. Glory to God. But you got to understand that the body of sin refers to the sinful nature within us. It's not talking about, oh my God, the human body. The Greek verb, uh, translated destroyed, does not mean to become extinct, but to be defeated or deprived of power. Talked on last Sunday about my tower of power. And you got to understand that when God reigns, in our lives. Oh God, that's what we should want to be seeking for each and every day and asking the Lord to reign in me. But we have to understand that it first begins by seeking him for the power, for the strength, for uh, the death of sin in our lives. Hallelujah. That uh, we, we no longer allow sin to control us. And that we're born into sin. We're shaped in iniquity. So that sinful nature is there. From the outset, the sinful nature is there. I oftentimes say this, and I want you to consider this. I don't know how old you were when you got saved. But think about the fact that However old you were, you had some prior years from when you were first born into this world as an innocent child. Amen. But then there were some things that happened along the way. So the whole time you've been in this world, once you're born, sin is wreaking havoc. Sin is taking, uh, becoming a deep-rooted portion of your life. Now, you may want to categorize and 
and say, well, this wasn't so bad, but you know, but oh, that was pretty bad. Listen, all unrighteousness is sin. Hallelujah. So the first thing that we, we, we need to understand when we say reign in me is it has to begin with this flesh being crucified. Lord, I need you to R-E-I-N, reign me in. Lord, when my thinking is not how it ought to be, Lord, reign me in. When my attitude gets a little twisted, because uh, I only want to do things my way. I don't want to hear about God's way. We need to say, Lord, reign me in. Lord, I need some restraints. I need some restrictions, hallelujah, that only you can put into place. Because there's a whole lot of people that have addictions. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, a lot of times, now there, there's some, a few and far between, who said, well, I'm just going to stop. Lock themselves in a room and, 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 and you know, uh, go cold turkey. Most people have to go to some type of clinic, some type of program. They have to go through some type of process. Oh, my God. So that there's a restraint from what they have become used to uh, get receiving. Uh, that high that they used to get in from a substance. So I'm saying that when it even comes to sin, we have to ask the Lord to reign us in. Lord, reign in me. That inner me, that, that, that fleshly man, that, that man that uh, just wants to please himself. That fleshly person that just wants to gratify their own needs. But Lord, as you reign me in, and we become reigned in by the word of God, by the instruction that we receive. Glory to God. So Lord, reign in me. Lord, I, I can't do it in and of myself, but I need you, Lord, to help me along the way. I need you to be a guide, hallelujah. Uh, I need you to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Lord God, so that I can live for you and serve you rightly. That I'm not a half step in sin. That I'm not just a Sunday morning saint, but all through the week. Lord, as you reign me in from my old man, from my old nature, sin is always lying under cover. And the devil will try to get you to come out from under the new man. Lord, but Lord, if you just reign me in, Lord, I'll be able to stand and to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. I'll be able to stand in the face of opposition. I'll be able to stand no matter what people say about me, I'll be able to hold to your unchanging hand, yet giving you glory and giving you praise. For Lord, you are worthy because I also, Lord, as you have reigned my inner man in, I realize, Lord God, I used to be a servant of Satan. I used to be enslaved by his devices, by his fleshly lusts. But as you have reigned me in, Lord, you begin, Lord, you begin to reign, R-E-I-G-N, in my life. I need a, a 
a, 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 a new, I need a new boss. Yes, Lord. I, I, I need a new boss. I, I need a new manager. I, I need a new king. I, I need new reigns. Something that's going to guide me when I get off track. Something that's going to convict me when I'm not doing the right thing. And that's why I need everybody ought to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost reigns. Reigns in us that he may reign. Lord, I know that there's no good thing that lies within me. But Lord, you know. You know when I'm right. You know when I'm wrong. Yes, Lord. But work on me. I need you to work in me. Because I oftentimes say, people be asking, say, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. But sometimes when you pray, you need to say, Lord, I need you to work in me. Because what he doesn't do for you, he can change inside of you. That's when he has full reign. When you submit and commit to the will and way of God, he will reign. He will be the supreme one in your life. He will, yes or no, he will be the one from whom you receive your marching orders. Understand this very simple fact. If you're not working for Jesus, you're doing what? Say it loud. If we come to the house of God, which is supposed to be our place of release and outlet and uh, receiving yes, sir. a place of strengthening yes, and that we come into his house his place, his property that has been dedicated unto him, now I'm just talking about the building we have a dedication right, we have a full dedication yes, sir. dedicated not just here, this whole place Dedicating it to God. Mm -hmm. But we come in, now the place is dedicated. We come in to this dedicated house with our undedicated selves. That's a this conflict. We ought to be coming in if he reigns in us. If he reigns in you, he reigns in me, we come to a dedicated house with a dedicated temple. So dedication meets dedication. Which breeds imitation. Oh, I got it. Hallelujah, my Lord. When you got dedication, edifice, dedicated. This bodily temple dedicated. That speaks to God. It's an invitation. You don't even have to speak it. If you come in right, the place is right, the Lord's going to be here. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Now, who in the world in their right mind would cancel and answered in the affirmative invitation to the Lord. Lord, come in the room. I saw something earlier, so I'm going to hit it. The president of the Lord was here. I saw some doing this passive thing. Praise, oh God. praise 
is not a cute thing. Worship is not superficial, but worship is intense. Worship is intimate. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise, your praise brings you to the doorway of worship. I can begin with a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But as I do those things, that he comes in and inhabits my praises, the Lord, oh my God, he provides an escort to the realm of worship. Hallelujah. And at the realm of worship, if I enter in, do you know, do you understand what's on the other side of praise to worship to entrance? Yes, my Lord. You come into the heavenly realm. <coughs> Don't you know that anything, somebody have to say anything. Oh, say this whole thing. Anything can happen in the heavenly realm. So when you get there at the threshold, yes, Father. Hallelujah. Maybe you came in a little stiff. Maybe you came in with stuff on your mind. Maybe you were burdened down. Maybe you were, oh my life, oh, grieving or something. Uh, something wrong with the body. Something wrong with your mind. Something wrong on the job. Something wrong in the home. Something, something. But you're here. I'm going to stop because I'm in another sermon. Hallelujah. But you're here. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. But you're here in the dedicated house. <laughs> I came in with a sanctified vessel. Hallelujah. I didn't treat anybody wrong. I didn't cuss anybody out. I had my mind on Jesus and Jesus is on my mind. And I came in with holy hands, lifted up on high. Woo, good God Almighty, so I began to praise him. I didn't care that somebody that didn't understand a real relationship with God, I didn't care that they looked at me like, that's all right. I know where my bread is buttered. I know who made the bread. Because if you don't get it by now, you may never, you may not get it. But it speaks that there's a faulty wire. There's a bad connection. Because if I get here, oh God, and trouble has engulfed me. Why can't I go 
prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, Ooh. and with thanksgiving.